What's up, YouTube? So, this is my first video with a script, so I'm having the script below the camera, so um, I'm not gonna be looking directly at the camera, and yeah, that's basically it. In fact, here's my script. So, yeah. Here's an unpopular opinion I would like to share. I do not like wet races. Many fans love them, many fans love wet races, and I get it, they're chaotic. But there is one person who agrees with me for a very good reason. Wet or dry? Right. Because of course he said that. And it's this man we're today going to talk about, Jules Bianchi. It's been four years since the crash that would eventually lead to his death, we will look back at how he lived, how he died, and how we, as a society, see our loved ones after they are gone. We will not assume the existence of God or Jehovah or Allah or insert name of deity here, so this video will look at death from an atheist-friendly perspective. I started watching from the one in late 2017, long after Bianchi died, so I may come up as shameless to some people as to how I talk about him. He was a champion in Junior Formula before test driving for Force India back in 2012. The following year, he was let in into Formula 1 to drive for Marussia, and the year after that, he wrestled his Marussia car from the back of the grid, since they always started from the back, all the way to P9. Mind you, Master Schappen in 2018 did the same thing from P20 to P9, not from P22, and he was in a far more powerful car. Needless to say, Joel was a really talented driver. Sure, I thought, when we look back at Monaco 2014, we pay our respects to the man who did that, until I ended up realizing that the same things we say now about Charles Leclerc were upset about Jules even when he was alive. And to be sure, finishing the Monaco Grand Prix in P9 in a manor is as impressive an achievement as Lewis Hamilton finishing his rookie season runner-up champion by one point in a McLaren. But let's also look at Hamilton. We said, and we were right, that he was destined to be one of the greats. But when we talk about him today, we say he's a bit of a crybaby on Team Radio. Had Bianchi gone on to win the championship with Ferrari, we might have ended up saying the same things about him. But since he never got the chance to, we get messages like this about him. Et merci Jules, cette victoire est pour toi. Cette victoire est pour toi. You will always be in our hearts. We know that sooner or later Jules would have been a part of this team. Mexican singer Chava Flores put it very clearly in one of his songs. He was talking in the context of a woman crying about her husband, but it works just as well to prove my point. Cuando vive el infeliz ya que se muera Y hoy que ya está en el feliz que bueno era Back when he was alive, may he die soon. Now that he's in the casket, he was such a good man. We only remember good things about the dead and we praise them far more than they were than when they were alive. So if there is anything to take from all of this, is that we should let our loved ones, our friends, family, etc that we love them, that we appreciate them, because then, when they're no longer with us, we cannot directly tell them anything. Sure, take some flowers to the grave, it's a great way to respect and acknowledge them. If you've seen the movie Coco, you know just how much my country, Mexico, cares about the dead. But the flowers you take to your loved one's grave, that person cannot enjoy them. Give that flower to them while they are still alive, a word of support, of affection, a box of chocolate. But give it to them while they are alive. Don't wait until it's too late. And now let's consider a question about Jules that we never thought before. Was Jules Bianchi gay? I stumbled upon the possibility of that a while ago while uh causing myself to have pleasure. Uh, I feel like I should make clear that this is still within the community regulation of YouTube, hence why it has been on the platform for over a decade. However, it is definitely true that you're about to see a guy sticking his tongue instead of another man's belly button. If you're into that, 
enjoy. If you're not into that, but you, but you think you can still take it, carefully look at the guy's face. And if you cannot take it, this is your last warning for you to look away from your screen for a few seconds while you listen to some nice background music. Okay, now you can look back at your screen. Uh, if you look closely enough, you may have noticed that the guy in question looks an awful lot like Jules Bianchi. Moreover, this video was uploaded in 2007 when Jules would have been 18 years old, and the guy in question sure looks around 18. Let's also mention that the channel this video comes from is French. There is no other conclusive info on the internet about Jules' uh, sexuality, and the claim that the man that appeared on the said video was Jules himself is impossible to verify, so I would say that there is a high possibility of that man being Jules Bianchi. Let's agree that a guy sticking his tongue into another man's navel is definitely gay. But wait, there's more. Let's listen again at Battle Steam Radio on the 2015 Hungarian Grand Prix. Listen carefully. Et merci Jules, cette victoire est pour toi. Cette victoire est pour toi. You will always be in our hearts. We know that sooner or later Jules would have been a part of this team. She would have been part of the team? Sure, drivers make a lot of grammar mistakes, like Checo being the most Mexican driver with podiums, or Ocon saying the job did an amazing guys, but that's just a mistake on word order. Changing he for she says more than that. Maybe he knew about it and was used to joke about it. And at the end of the day, does it really matter? The best way to know if a person is gay is to ask them directly, but we cannot ask Jules. That leaves us with the final answer, pragmatism. You believe what you choose to believe at this point since there is no way to verify. Jules was or wasn't gay depending on what you choose and how you choose to remember him. And you will never really be wrong. Personally, I choose to believe that Jules was gay so I can feel proud of that outstanding drive in Monaco in 2014. However, this does open the door to conspiracy theories. Was he assassinated by some kind of homophobe? To answer that, let's remember that the FIA ordered an investigation on Bianchi's crash and the resulting report was more than 300 pages long. If there was some kind of conspiracy, we would know it by now. So what I choose to believe is that Jules was gay and that I should trust the FIA that his death was caused by a long series of mistakes and monumental blunders and cock-ups by essentially everyone. So this was the video and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and. Yeah, I hope I didn't piss you off too badly, and I guess until next time, and thank you very much for watching. I wish you have a really nice day, and coming up, a video about another driver, Lance Stroll. Stay tuned for that.